Fallout New Vegas has many different weapons to choose from. Grenade launchers, anti-material rifles, and bumper swords to name a few. But what if you wanted to use something a little more ordinary? How about the very thing Khans use to dig your grave? In today's video, we'll be finding out if you can beat Fallout New Vegas using only a shovel. After waking up, I gave myself an appropriate name and started making my way through the tutorial. Choosing 9 strength for more damage, 9 intelligence for more skill points, 6 endurance for a slight boost to my overall health, and 1 charisma because I don't need people to like me, I just need them to die. After Doc Mitchell showed me his drawings, I chose melee weapons, speech, and barter, also choosing the Wild Wasteland trait. With that done, I robbed him, traded with Chet for a shovel, Stimpax, and bottle caps, and went next door to the Prospector's saloon to speak with Sunny. Out back, she gave me a varmint rifle and told me to shoot the bottles. Instead, I used the shovel, and nothing happened. So I went to the schoolhouse, killed the mantises, hacked the computer, picked the safe, and left. I then thought about Fallout 3 and the BB gun. I was allowed to shoot the targets to progress the game? Is using the varmint rifle to shoot the bottles really all that different? I thought not, so I went back, shot the bottles, ended the tutorial, and went to see Trudy. Inside the saloon, Cobb was causing trouble, and I decided to rid the town of him forever, using various skill books to convince the townsfolk to help me do it. All bar the stubborn old mule. I then hit level 2, increasing melee weapons, repair, science, and speech, also choosing the Black Widow perk to woohoo Benny. Shortly after, Cobb attacked the town, died, but not before killing Ringo. Luckily, he doesn't have to survive to complete the quest. With a job well done, I went to collect the spare shovel from the watering hole, drank said water, and headed for Quarry Junction, killed a powder ganger, took a nap, and met Chomp Lewis who suggested I go the long way to Vegas so as to avoid the prolific death claws nearby. I said okay, and carried on anyway. It's pretty difficult to get through here without getting attacked by death claws, which is why I went towards Neil's shack at the bottom of Black Mountain, where Neil told me I had to leave, and I did, just not back the way I came. On the other side is a way through the mountains marked by flaming barrels and the body of an NCR soldier. His uniform would come in handy, so I took it, put all those years of watching Takeshi's castle to good use, and left Black Mountain behind. Across the field, I met the fiends, who make the raiders of the capital wasteland look like pansies. In less than 10 seconds, they had broke my arm, broke my leg, broke my torso, killed one of their own, and to top it all off, my shovel's condition was getting low. After the fight, I hit level 3, increasing medicine, melee weapons, and speech, also using a doctor's bag to heal my crippled limbs. A short walk northwest, I discovered Camp McCarran, traded with Daniel in the armory, and put on the NCR uniform I had picked up. Thanks to the uniform, I could walk by the guards and board the monorail directly to the strip, avoiding the need for a passport and saving both time and bottle caps. Once I was at the strip, I went to the Topps Casino, where they took my shovel, removing my ability to kill Benny. I also hit level 4, increasing speech, and choosing the Educated perk. Using the Black Widow perk, I convinced Benny to sleep with me, realized I couldn't kill him, ran ahead, spoke to Yes Man, who was all too happy to tell me everything I wanted to know, Benny's plan, the Platinum Chip, the fort, Yes Man even told me how I could take Vegas for myself which I liked the sound of. I didn't want to sleep with Benny, but I had no other choice. Until he left for the fort, I couldn't progress. I couldn't kill him, and I couldn't take the chip either. I had made my bed, and now I had to sleep in it with Benny. For those that don't know, Benny is voiced by Matthew Perry, and all I could think of during the sexual encounter was, is this what it would be like to be Monica? Nice Charlies too. Give him a shake for the Ben man, will you? For her sake, I hope not. After letting Benny live, for now, I went to sleep and woke up to find a note. Classic Benny. I knew what I had to do thanks to Yes Man. I also leveled up twice to level 6, increasing melee weapons and speech, 
also choosing the toughness perk. With that done, I left the tops, got my shovel back, was approached by Vulpes Inculta, who gave me the mark of Kaiser, and requested my presence at the fort, which was convenient because that's where Benny went. I agreed, and was then approached by an NCR trooper, who gave me a letter from Ambassador Crocker. I agreed, knowing full well I had no intentions of seeing him, and went to the fort. It was somewhat far away, so I fast traveled to Neil's shack, killed a super mutant which took quite a while, and did the same to the nearby centaurs, evolved centaurs, and the unique variant, Mo. These guys hit hard, much harder than super mutants. One evolved centaur had glitched into the ground, so I used that, killed it, and immediately realized my mistake. Fast traveling back to Neil's shack, I returned, and looted the Brotherhood soldiers at the bottom of the crater. After getting advanced radiation sickness, I discovered the Hidden Valley and entered into Scorpion Gulch. After the centaurs, I was pretty confident, so I jumped down, attacked a giant rad scorpion, and died. This approach wouldn't work, so I turned into a mountain goat and scaled the walls to the other side, robbed a grave, and ran away as fast as my little legs would take me. Near Cottonwood Cove, I encountered fire geckos, didn't realize they were fire geckos, had my face scorched, ran away, got cornered, and died. Reloading, I tried again, this time fighting, but there were just too many, and I died again. Trying once more, I ran for my life, stumbled over the edge of a cliff, saved myself, only to get whacked off by a gecko. Luckily, I didn't die, and the one to push me got sniped by the Legion. Climbing down to safety, I spoke to Cursor Lucullus and took a boat trip to the fort. At the fort, my shovel was yet again taken away, and I met Kaiser. I played along, agreed to go into the bunker and destroy its contents. I also said hello to Benny, got my shovel back, and met Mr. House. He was a little miffed that I hadn't gone to see him first, but apparently this is where he wanted me anyway. Now, Kaiser wants me to destroy the contents. Mr. House wants me to use the chip to activate his secret supply of Securitrons, and Yes Man doesn't care. Kaiser will only feel the ground shake regardless of the outcome, so the easy choice here is to temporarily side with House, fight through the turrets, forget New Vegas' healing system is slightly different to Fallout 3, die, reload, live, and activate the Securitrons. After doing so, I hit level 7, increasing melee weapons and speech. Before going back outside, I wanted to see if I could trick the game, so I dropped a shovel, tried to leave, handed everything over, picked up the shovel I had just dropped, and left. It was that easy. Back at Kaiser's tent, I lied, was told I could choose Benny's fate, and hit level 8, increasing melee weapons and choosing the Super Slam perk. This gave the shovel a unique ability, the chance to knock over enemies. One of, if not the most useful perks in the game for both melee and unarmed builds. Kaiser then gave me a machete, I said no, pulled out the shovel, and sent Benny into an endless sleep. I also took his clothes because no one asks me to shake my Charlies and gets away with it. I had finished working for Kaiser, so I travelled back to the strip where Victor opened the door to the Lucky 38 Casino. Instead of speaking with Mr. House, I opened the antechamber, unlocked the elevator, entered the control room, and killed him. With sides picked, Yes Man switched rigs and showed me what the Platinum Chip really does. Long story short, the Platinum Chip unlocks the Securitron's primary weapons. Yay! After the presentation, I hit level 9, increasing melee weapons to 100. The next step to completing the main quest is Deciding what to do with the other factions. Kill them, recruit them, leave them alone, the choice is yours. I did read that you can lie to Yes Man and skip having to visit the factions. That option wasn't clear, so I left, and went to deal with the Brotherhood of Steel at the Hidden Valley first. I fast travelled, entered a dust storm, tried finding the bunker, went into the wrong one, waited for the storm to pass, and left, only to get killed by a Brotherhood patrol. I had no idea why this happened, my reputation with the Brotherhood was unclear, so I avoided them, found the right bunker, and hoped the Brotherhood members inside didn't attack. 
They didn't, but what they did do was strip me down and strap a bomb to my neck. With no other choice, I did as they asked, went to a different bunker nearby, and literally mopped the floor with the ranger. After that, they removed the collar, and I was free to go. However, I wanted the power armor training, and I didn't remember the process taking that long. I was wrong. I know there's a few different ways of getting the PA training, but siding with the Elder was the path I chose. So, the first thing I had to do was find three different missing patrol groups. Now, I had already found the first group near Black Mountain, so I went to the Repcon headquarters to find the second group, got the tour guide to unlock the door, pretended to be Jenny Millet to reach the second floor, and on the third floor, was given a 30 second warning to return to the second floor, which was more than enough time to locate the group, retrieve the tape, and leave. The third and final group was on the outskirts of Nellis Air Force Base, which was convenient because the Boomers, those residing at Nellis Air Force Base, was another faction I had to speak with. After fast traveling to Freeside's North Gate, I traded with the Gunrunners, made a bet with George, and found the third group at the bottom of a crater. At the gate I met the Boomers, was taken to Pearl, agreed to help her, left without helping, collected my reward from George, and returned to the Brotherhood to get my power armor training. But wait, there's more. The next thing I had to do was travel to three different scouts, found near the NCR Correction Facility, Nipton, and Camp Forlorn Hope, saying to them, are the bears still hunting, to collect their data. After doing so, I returned to the Brotherhood to take the power armor training, but wait, there's more. The next thing I had to do was report to Lorenzo and figure out what components he needed to keep the bunker's air filtration system running, a differential pressure controller, a reverse pulse cleaner, and several HEPA cartridge filters, all of which can be found inside a vault. Not the same vault, three different vaults. To top it all off, as I left the bunker and fast traveled to Helios 1, the closest location I had found so far to Vault 11, the game crashed. Reloading, I tried again, made it to Helios 1, made it to Vault 11, and learned that unlike the mantises back at the schoolhouse in Good Springs, which was small and weak, big bugs meant business. After many mantises and impromptu stops to heal, I went swimming, found the first component, and left for Vault 3. The next vault was situated in the South Vegas ruins, where many fiends called home. I had already fought with the fiends, they weren't easy, but they weren't impossible either. However, with enough numbers, even the weakest of foes can become a serious challenge. I died several times trying to get past the first building. It was as if every fiend within the area had decided to get involved. After leaving the area, healing, returning, killing one fiend at a time, leaving yet again to heal, and repeating the process over and over, I was able to make it to Vault 3 in one piece. Inside I lied, said I had brought a shipment of chems, and went down to the maintenance wing to retrieve the second component. Mid-retrieval, Motor Runner, the leader of the fiends, started talking. My mind thought the worst, but the only thing Motor Runner hurt was my feelings. With another component checked off the list, I left for Vault 22. The South Vegas ruins was actually the closest location to the final vault. The only problem was, as I was leaving the ruins, I encountered the raider Cook Cook and his friends. I ran away, attracted a whole litter of fiend attack dogs, attacked while walking backwards, and I was going to leave Cook Cook alive, but then I attracted geckos, and I was having flashbacks to the last time that happened. So, in order to get away, I sacrificed a fiend, lost the dogs between the trailers, killed Cook Cook, pulled off his head, killed anyone that was left alive, and couldn't believe I had survived. Not a minute later, I killed three more fiends and hit level 10, increasing medicine and choosing the bloody mess perk. By now, I was feeling pretty strong. The sight of Cazadors reminded me I wasn't, so I snuck over the nearby hill and went inside Vault 22. Inside, I clashed with the spore carriers, couldn't use the elevator because my repair wasn't high enough, took the stairs instead, used the overseer's terminal to unlock certain areas, 
found a keycard to override a different door, went through a cave, passed through a broken wall, and retrieved the final component. It was done. I could finally return to the Brotherhood and receive the Power Armor training. But wait, there's more. Head to the summit of Black Mountain and install a remote signal transmitter in one of their consoles. I won't go into the details of the mission, but I was ambushed by Nightkin. Blown up by Nightkin. Crippled several times, almost died repeatedly, hit level 11, increasing medicine, stole Tabitha's key from beneath the stairs, and spent five long minutes finding out just how thick Tabitha's skull really was. Returning to the Brotherhood, I could finally, definitely, without a doubt, receive power armor training. And I did. But was it worth it? Only time would tell. For those wondering, this whole ordeal to acquire power armor training took just a little over two and a half hours. I wasted no time getting to know the other factions, I didn't even have to speak to the Khans, only discover their home, and a brief conversation with Mortimer at the Ultralux and a swift chin wag with an Omerta thug was all it took to deal with them. I then returned to the Lucky 38, told Yes Man I wanted to leave every faction alone, and let President Kimball get assassinated. Yes Man then gave me an override module and told me to go to the El Dorado substation and attach it to the power control terminal. The substation was occupied by NCR forces and only they could go inside, so I donned the ranger's uniform still wet with blood and went inside. After attaching the module, they told me to leave, which I had no problem doing, and I hit level 12, increasing medicine and choosing the unstoppable force perk, meaning I now did a large amount of additional damage through enemy blocks, which was really useful when dealing with enemies using melee weapons. It was finally time to wrap up the challenge, I bought all the stim packs I could from Julia Farkas at the old Mormon fort, and returned to Yes Man, who said there was two ways to take control of the dam. Option 1, destroy the generators, effectively turning Hoover Dam into nothing more than a giant stone wall, which the NCR won't want anymore, or option 2, reroute the power from the dam to the Securitrons beneath Kaisar's fort and using their additional numbers to wipe out both the NCR and Legion forces. Place your bets, people. With nothing left to do, I went to partake in the second battle for Hoover Dam, the Legion displayed their flying capabilities, and although I was able to knock Centurions over the side, they did seem to come back. But all that meant was I got to try again. It took a lot of health to make it to the control room, where two heavy NCR troopers stood guard. They warned me to not go inside, I went inside, installed the override chip so the Securitron's army could be activated, which Yes Man was very excited about, and killed the heavies with my trusty shovel. The last thing to do before the Securitrons were activated was find the Eastern Power Plant and turn it on. Hands down, the easiest part of the challenge. With the switch flicked, it was done. My army was on its way, and all I had left to do was travel to the Legate's camp and deal with the beast from the east. The short walk to the camp was spent batting or shoveling enemies out of the way, which was really fun. At the camp, I killed the Praetorian guard, took his clothes, put them on so the other guards wouldn't attack me, and spoke to the Legate. Now, by passing several speech checks ranging from 55 to 65, to 75, to 85, to... Oh no. So, as it turns out, I'm not very good at reading, and thanks to that, my speech wasn't high enough to get Lanius to fight me one-on-one, -on -one, which led to me running away, putting on the power armor, getting shot at from all angles, punched, kicked, crippled, blown up, and before they could have the satisfaction of putting me down, I reloaded, searched for anything I had that could increase my speech by five, and found a meeting people's magazine. Two of them. I was curious to see if they stacked, they didn't, but one was enough to increase my speech to 90. I approached the Legate for the second time, passed the speech check, spoke about Vegas, which ran his patients thin, and there's the 80 speech check I must have read about. I went with bluff instead of karma, no reason why, and convinced the Legate to fight me mano a mano. No guards, no support, 
only him with his giant sword and me with my trusty shovel. I put some distance between us, prepared for a grand slam, and got fired into the air. As I got to my feet, I was hit again, thwacked him back twice, and for some reason, died. No indication as to why, I just dropped dead. While Lanius got back up, he was good. I don't know what otherworldly powers he possessed, but they were strong. I tried again, this time getting the upper hand and brushing him under the cart. He then used magic yet again, I knocked him out, and as I jumped down to kill him, he gave me the slip. I tried again, but could not separate him from his cart. I swung madly, but he had the high ground. He also had a pistol. I had to get inside the cart and use it to my advantage. Many, many, many hits later, Lanius flopped over the side and didn't come back. I had him on the run, and then it all became clear. Lanius wasn't the one with powers, it was the cart, and it didn't want to let me go. I promised to return after the battle was done, followed Lanius, and after a lengthy pounding, he cast me into the fire like a discarded rag. He then finished me off, quickly. I didn't stand a chance. I tried again, and again, and again, and then I got lucky, pinning him against the wall and beating his meat until he was no longer hostile. He then repeated his lines and went to beg the cart for help. It declined his plea, and I slowly, and I do mean slowly, shoveled the legate to death. It was over. I had won. Somehow, I had defeated the legate with a shovel. I then went to the gate, met General Lee Oliver, and let the Securitrons do the work, because my clicking finger was pretty messed up by this point. Yes Man said he was suspiciously going to reprogram himself to be more assertive, didn't much like the sound of that, but the run was officially complete. So to answer the question, can you beat Fallout New Vegas with a shovel, yes, yes you can. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure.